past year's picture of suburban life, the squire's 79 wistful vista standing on the front lawn, garden hose in hand, gracefully sprinkling the grass, and exchanging greetings with passing neighbors. But you know, and we know, that things can't stay as peaceful as this. We're Sibby McGee and Molly! I won't do 
Don't do it, McGee. I didn't come here to play games. I've had a hard day at the office and I'm tired. Oh, it'll do. You better relax. Come on, I'll give you till I count two to get past me. One, two. No, cut it out, McGee. Stop it. <laughs> Hurry up, Gildersleeve. Out of the way, there. <laughs> hey, cut that out of the phone. Stop it. You're getting me all wet, McGee. <laughs> I always said you were a big punk, Gildersleeve. <laughs> now let's see how much you can soak up. <laughs> Why, George, this is the last straw, McGee. <laughs> After you. Oh, yeah? You want the toes right in your fist? <laughs> hey, what are you going to do with that knife? I'm going to cut the toes into bits. That's what I'm going to do. Now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Well, you're not me. Thank goodness. One side there, McGee. Hey, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'll fix this. Yeah. I guess that'll fix you, McGee. <laughs> You'll never sprinkle in the bed with that hose again. I won't, eh? <laughs> Well, neither will you. What's that? It's your hose. I borrowed it this afternoon. <laughs> hey, come here. Listen to me now. Cut it out, Gilderson. Oh. I saw the whole thing through the window. Fancy was saying, turning the hose on Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Boy, was that fun. Old Jimmy was wet in the mad hand. <laughs> well, now you have no business wrenching him, McGee. What if he should catch cold? Oh, don't worry, he won't. Even a germ wouldn't associate with that guy. Well, now just the same, don't antagonize him too much. Why, he could tell you apart like a uh, like an artist show. Who, <laughs> that guy? <laughs> Go on, I could slap that mud down with a wet noodle. Well, what do you want, Wilcox? So as the guy says when he's sat on the bee, I have a deep seated suspicion. <laughs> well, you seem a little prepared, Mr. Wilcox. Well, look, I just talked to Gildersleeve, and he said he was going to pin Fibber's ears back. Oh, he said that, did he? Why, that big bird's a boat. A few more cracks like that, and I'll knock him flat in a policeman's feet. Now, take it easy, dearie. <laughs> Remember now, McGee, you're not the man you used to be, if you ever were. Yes, and don't forget, Gildersleeve was once an intercollegiate boxing champion. Oh, silly on him, if he thinks... What'd you say? I said he used to be intercollegiate boxing champion. But don't worry about it. Why, if anything happens, I can have an ambulance over here in six minutes. Oh, oh, heavenly days, an ambulance. An, 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 an ambulance? <laughs> You mean one of them cars that runs along in front of a cheap lawyer? <laughs> sure, sure. The driver is a great friend of mine. I sold him some of that sensational new wax polish Johnson's car in you for his ambulance. And he thinks it's marvelous. Says it's as wonderful for cars as glow coat is for pores and linoleum. And it is. Well, now, isn't it nice, dear, that you'll be hauled away to the accident ward by a good Johnson customer? Oh. Boy, is he a good Johnson customer. Why, when he found out, Fibber, that Johnson's car knew was a double-action product that cleans and polishes in one operation, he was amazed and delighted. You simply apply it, let it dry, and wipe it off. And there's your ambulance, looking like new. My ambulance? Now, look, Wilcox, I don't want to know. He said to me, pal, he said. He always calls me pal now. Now, he said, just for introducing me to Johnson's car new, my ambulance is at the service of you and your friends any time. So just call me if anything happens, Fibber. So long, Molly. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Gildersleeve was a boxing champion. Well, as one of Beatrice's stockings said to the others, you certainly got yourself out on a beautiful limb this time, dear. <laughs> Yeah, but as the fly says, when he fell into the preserves, I've been in much worse jams than this. Oh, you have, have you? Yeah. Well, come and look out this window. Okay. Huh? There. Look out there. Uh-oh. Ooh, that's really through for the punching bag. Oh, well, nothing wrong with a guy getting a little exercise, I guess, is there? Well, I'm afraid you can't last this off, do you? Hmm? He's getting ready for you, and you know it. Oh, dear. Just look at the muscles on him. Oh, I don't. Oh! Did you see that, McGee? He knocked the bag clear over the fence. Uh, I thought. Just a lucky punch, though. Well, <laughs> Molly, I've been thinking we ought to get out of town for a few days. Take a little drive somewhere. 
We do. It's both good. No, no, we don't, McGee. You're not going anywhere if you see this thing through. Oh. You've made your bed, now don't crawl under it. <laughs> don't crawl on it. I ain't afraid of that Well, guy. now, there's only one way we might avoid any trouble. Huh? Oh. oh what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, here, here. Calm yourself. You're like a boy with the soda grasping its straw. Now, look. Go over to Mr. Gildersleeve and apologize. No. Tell him you're sorry you turned the hose on him. I won't. Well, all right. I'll do it. Fine. Now, you run along, dearie. Here, here, here. What are you doing taking that baseball bat along? Well, if he wants to be friendly, you'll see us out in the backyard playing ball. Otherwise, see you later, Mom. Ah, me. If I know Mr. Gildersleeve, McGee will never get to first base, even with that bat. Come in. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. Miller. Oh, oh, no, Mr. McGee. No, Mrs. Duffington. He's gone next door to see Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, really? Well, I'd better go over there and see them both at once. What about Mrs. Duffington? Well, the parents' teacher is so she is the very most most meeting to physical culture, and the benefit is the rich younger children. Oh, I see. Yes, and we wanted Mr. Gildersleeve and Mr. McGee to appear on the platform. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm afraid McGee isn't exactly the... You see, Mr. Gildersleeve is such a splendid example of a man who keeps his bells and muscles, good color, and fancy active. And Mr. Hughes, uh, well, he is that really he would exemplify the other side of the picture. <laughs> I see. Uh, you know, Mr. Gildersleeve is the strongest man in this city, sir. Well, he can actually tie a knot in an iron fist. Hmm. Well, what of it? McGee isn't so bad either. Why, I've seen him tear a telephone number in two of his bare hands. <laughs> Well, I'm telling what you wanted, Mr. Duffington. Oh, thank you. Tell him that you and Mr. Gildersleeve will stand so well held on the stage with pounds on that foot. Mr. Gildersleeve will read, Do you want to look like a bitch? And what will McGee sign say? Oh, uh, this. <laughs> so you're not going to get to tell him I'll be all good night. I'm afraid he doesn't know what he's up against. Then, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. On the other hand, the smaller they are, the quicker they fall. Oh, the moon, sir. Oh, hi, Molly. McGee, what happened? Tell me quick. What happened about what? Tell me first about your fight with Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Oh, oh, that. Well, he refused to accept my apology, so we agreed to fight it out, man to man. But where? When? How? My goodness, McGee, don't you realize it? Maybe that's him now. You better clear a space in the other room, Molly. I'll do no such a thing. If there's any fighting in here, you'll do it outside. <laughs> Come in. Now, wait a minute, Joe, please. Remember, we agreed to... Oh, oh, hi, old-timer. Hello, Johnny. Hello, daughter. You're going to have a fight with old Gildersleeve, Johnny. You need a trainer? <laughs> no, I don't. What he needs is a train. One that leaves town as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that's too good, boy. In fact, that's very good. But it's the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fellow says to tell a fellow, say, say, I see where they're going to put out moving pictures and nickel slot machines. That's all, says to tell a fellow. Wonder how those seem to come in at the beginning of the picture. Do <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a trainer, Johnny? No, I don't. I don't need a trainer. I'll slug that guy in circles like a fake telephone. You too handy when you're a duke? Am I? Well, I suck, old timer. I've always been a scrapper. Why, even in kindergarten, I could bowl over the toughest guy in the room with one punch. Punch Bowl McGee, I was no doubt in my Punch Bowl McGee pronounced the test in public, the pugilistic picture, the pedigree, the paper weight, pug, commonly pudgy salucas, pulverizing proboscises, and paralyzing pug uglies, common poor preliminary poor food dealers, poor pop with a puppet tip of the top, positively a piece of a punch that clunks the punks on their piazzas, the ping pong top of the pineapple punch, the peculiar poke that petrifies the pit of the pond for the pull of fishes to pop to the platform, soup pop by the protest, dancing and posing and full of ambition, but see some boys, I'm out of condition. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you better get busy. Haven't you uh, better be doing something about it? What do you mean? Such a what? Well, do a little road work. Saddle box. Hmm? Uh, uh, soak your feet in salt water. <laughs> Why do you think up a bit? 
Think I'd better run out and catch the short length of clothesline. Clothesline? What do I do with that? Uh, keep it. <laughs> I don't know why I should worry about it if you're going to stand there. Come in. Oh, good afternoon, my dear. And how to you, Miss Tom? <laughs> oh, hi, Abima. What are you up to? Besides, no good. Well, I heard a few about to engage in a circus with Humpty Dumpty next door, sort of thing. Well, what's that got to do with you, Horatio? That's the Libyan thing. What makes you so bellicose, bellicose? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just keep your little excuses. Get out. Bradley, I didn't come here to bandy words, bandy legs. I thought you'd be interested in a hacking of accident insurance. I wouldn't be interested, Beamer. Any company that would have you as a salesman would have a crook for its president. Huh? I haven't thought that way about my dear father. <laughs> I'll just allow me to show you one of our policies, bug eyes. Make it snappy, Beamer. I haven't got all day. Ah, oh, in a hurry to get your ears sticking, are you? Well, let me see. Insurance policy, insurance policy, insurance policy. I was here a minute ago for the $2 parking ticket on a horse that parked too long at the post. Here's a small musical car, very handy for cutting off Stillbury programs. Small <laughs> time for the first night to die. Never could find a man's voice in there. <laughs> Which I was suddenly startable, thank goodness. <laughs> hey, here's a joke about the Grand Canyon. Ah, oh, there's a beautiful cross. <laughs> and a this tower marked, please return to Sing Sing. Who knew the town? His nose to God, but. My goodness, have I seen that low? <laughs> What's this? Why, it's the one out I can, I can hardly read. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the card there. Oh, well, thank you, Dad. No insurance policy. Well, it's just as well for you, Mr. Boomer. I don't think Mr. McGee is a very good insurance risk right now. I had that in mind, John Buxton and Beautiful. Oh, my. I'm glad to do the food that's been knocking the frosting off your little cupcakes here. I was going to split the pair off of you, just a fifty. For one swift premium, we'd have collected on that ham advertisement. <laughs> Uh, Tell me more about this fight with Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, we just agreed to lock ourselves into a room, take off our coats, and go to it. What? But McGee, don't you realize that he's fighting? Uh, no, no, look here, oh, McGee. Now, uh, now, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. Wait a minute. You agreed to let it go. I'm not talking about that, McGee. I just happen to remember that you were in my new garden hose. I never done no such a thing, Gildersleeve. You cut it to pieces yourself. Well, how did I know it was mine? How did you know it was yours? You just think that you ain't the dumbest, old editor, old cuttiness, old cuttiness. Mrs. McGee, I'll thank you not to give me any suggestions. Now, you quit picking on my wife, you I'm not picking on your wife, you little biological brute or not. <laughs> if you had the IQ of a Japanese clam digger. Ah, oh, here, here. What does IQ mean? Intelligent creatures. Oh. So. I'm a quotient, am I? Why, you great boy. Ah, oh, here, boys, boys, please. I have a I'm going to stop off at it to think the boys say so, Molly. The time has come for action. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> so that's the way you feel about it. Take off your coat. Okay. Where is it, please? You forget. There's a lady, I think. Oh, don't mind me, boys. I'm no lady. You are, too. He is not. I am, too. <laughs> Oh, trying to put me in the middle again, are you, Gildersleeve? Okay, that's us. Come on in the other room and we'll settle this thing once and for all. All right, McGee. You're asking for it. Asking for it. I'm demanding it. Come on. Oh, okay. oh, oh heavenly days. It's come at last. I never thought I'd actually get beyond the U R two I N option. I wonder if I ever call for help. Oh, oh, what are you looking to that? Remember, McGee. This is to a finish. Okay, to a finish. Let's get out of here. Okay. Move that table up this way. Uh, All right, McGee. Let's go. I'm ready. And I don't mind 
I'm telling you, I'm going to give you such a pussy around here. Oh, I think this has gone far enough. I won't have them wrecking my house, I won't. Now look here, you two. Yeah. Well, what on earth? <laughs> Too late for the now, Mike. Yes. We're all set to go, Mrs. McGee. Ready, McGee? Ready, Gildersleeve. There's the checker. Which you want, red or black? <laughs> It is not. I just moved. Even now, I just moved this man over here. What? Why are you great big bulls? Then you made it. Look here, McGee. Oh, dear, oh, dear. This is where I came in. I'm going to bed, boys. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs>